Hello, and welcome to Office Hours, where I answer your questions about weight and weight medicine. I'm Dr. Megan. I'm a board-certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this is really important because I actually prescribe these medications all the time. I actually talk to patients about their weight all the time. I've helped hundreds of patients lose weight, and I'm here to help you too. So if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medicines, and if you want medically-based fact-based answers to your weight questions, you are in the right place. Welcome. Before we get started, I am so excited because I am doing consult week the week of July 28th. Right now, my consult schedule is booked out for a while. And so the week of July 28th, I'm opening up that week. I'm doing consults every single day. So if you are interested in working with me, pause this video, Go grab a spot, then come back and watch the rest of the video because every time I do this, you guys are like boop, 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 and then they're gone, they're all gone. So if you're interested in working with me, grab a spot now. If you didn't know, in addition to working as an obesity medicine doctor, I also work as a life coach to help people with the non-medical aspects of their weight loss. I have helped people lose weight who are on GLP-1s. I have helped people lose weight who are not on GLP-1s. I have helped people exercise consistently. I have helped people totally transform their relationship with food. Whatever's going on with you, I can guarantee you I've heard it about 5,000 times. This is the done solution. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, if you really want to fix what's going on with you, like, come talk to me. We'll fix it. It's done. Uh, go grab a spot and let's talk. Let's get started. Before we dive into the questions, as always, I can't answer personal medical questions because I'm not your personal doctor. Um, so if your question does lean a little personal, I'm going to change it a little bit so it's more broadly educationally relevant for everyone. Um, and let's get started. So first question, would you recommend doing weightlifting over cardio for liraglutide? I'm going to start it in seven days and a little nervous of some of the fear stuff that I've seen online. I have briefly tried fentramine before and felt good on that, but they wouldn't prescribe that this time. What a great question. Okay. Uh, yes, I would definitely recommend weight training on liraglutide. If you're debating between which to start first, anybody on a weight loss medication really does need to be doing strength training because everybody, in terms of weight loss, everybody's going to lose some muscle, regardless of the amount, uh, regardless of the way you are losing weight. It's just collateral damage. So it's really important that... Uh, when you start a GLP-1 medication that you, maybe it's not the day that you start the medication, but you have a plan or you want to have a plan or you're thinking about, or you are acknowledging that it is very important to start weight training. So if I had a patient who was debating between the two, I would go with weight training because also weight training is a little bit easier to customize. And by that, I mean um, cardio for people who have excess weight. Um, if they are getting into cardio, that is gonna be a lot of time, not all the time, but many times it's gonna be a lot of um, force on the joint. And of course it depends on what kind of cardio you're doing, how long you're doing it. But I do think uh, it's a little easier to do 10 to 20 minutes of weight training um, get a full body workout, start there, you know, once a week, twice a week. Uh, you can always add cardio afterwards and you should, but the weight training, I think it's really important. The sooner you start it, the better. I always tell people, if you have literally no idea what you're doing, uh, hire a trainer for a session or two so they can walk you through proper form, but also, you know, how hard to push yourself. Because if you're lifting like a two pound weight, that's unless you're doing like a hundred reps with it, it's probably not going to give you the results that you want. So I think that's really important if you're brand new to it. But if not, if I had a patient who they're trying to decide between the two, uh, weight, both are important. Um, but I think weight training is great to start early and is probably a little easier to figure out logistically as well. Okay. Next question. I'm in menopause and have been taking um, I've been taking a GLP-1 since March. I just started on a whole dose, but very discouraged as I've only lost 10 pounds. I'm almost 5'2 and 180 pounds now. Any advice? Okay, great question. 
I think, um, I don't, I think if pe for people who are in kind of a transitional period of life, I think it's important to acknowledge it, but I don't like to hang my hat on that to explain everything. So I think about menopause similar to how I think about weight after childbirth, um, in that, you know, it's very easy to have this expectation of, it's just really hard to lose weight. And I think that cuts us off from the possibility that it, it might not be hard. Like it might not be an issue. It might be fine. Um, there are lots of people who lose weight and get right back to where they were after they have kids. Some people don't, some, but some people do. And I think it's a narrative that we have in the US of like, well, the kind of the weight is inevitable. And I think we have a lot of that um, story around menopause as well. And I think part of the reason is probably both during the post, you know, after childbirth period and menopause is a time when a lot of women are started on medications like SSRIs or SNRIs, which really can interfere with weight loss and which can add like 10 to 20 pounds. So I think it's just a hidden cause that really is not discussed much at all. And as a clinician, as a physician who sees this every day, like it's very real for people. Like it happens all the time that people are gaining weight from these medications, not everybody. And it's not to say that these medications aren't needed for some people, but it's just good to have an awareness and also an awareness of, you know, do you have this narrative in your head that is a broader cultural narrative of, well, that's just what happens. You're gonna gain weight. Like that's not really, true and i think it just sets people up to not live their healthiest lives so that being said uh, and i've made a whole bunch of videos about menopause you can definitely check those out but um I'm, it sounds like if you're saying hold those you might be on compounded medication in which case you know that's on its own for people who are on compounded medication you're never really sure what you're getting and also not just in terms of safety but efficacy like you don't know if this medication if how it was made how you were instructed to store it like how multi-use vials like there's so many uh details where things could go awry that people don't really have to deal with when they're on the fda uh, regulated medications. And I know a lot of you out there are on the compounded medications and you love them and you've told me that and I, I hear you. It's, it's, not, it's not where I come from, but I hear you that you like them and it's, you're allowed to buy them for now. Um, they are still for sale many places. So, so that's, you know, a second issue of, you know, are you taking something that is going to be effective? Um, that's always a good question. And then, um, you know, for people who are having, uh, and again, uh, a slower than anticipated weight loss, um, it's always good to think about other medical conditions that might be going on that haven't been addressed, sleep apnea, thyroid issues, things like that. Uh, diabetes, uh, it's always good to think about medications that somebody might be on that might be interfering. I always really like to do a deep dive on how, what is this person's life like? Like, how are they eating? Are they like, what else is going on? What else are they doing to help the medication out? That's really important. Um, are there under any underlying um, eating issues? Like that is also uh, can be a very important variable. And then, um, then there are some people who, you know, they're not gonna lose weight until they get to the higher level. So for example, if I had a patient on very high dose gabapentin for pain, I'm not really expecting them to lose a ton of weight in the beginning. Now, if they do, great. But I wouldn't be surprised if it takes them to, you know, if they were on terzepatide, if they need to be on the 10 milligram dose, the 12.5. Like I'm, I'm not surprised if that's when the needle starts to move. Um, 
And then of course, there are just going to be in the minority people for whom this medication is not going to be the best fit. There are rarely, but it does happen. Some people just don't lose weight on this medication. So there's the average weight loss, but then there's people on either side. There are the people who lose all the weight with the tiny dose. And then there are people who lose no weight or even gain a little bit of weight. Now, both are uncommon, but they do happen. So those are all the things that I'm thinking of if somebody is having um, slower uh, weight loss than anticipated. But sometimes I can actually anticipate that it is going to be slow depending on what else is going on for the patient. So what a great question. Thank you so much. Next question. How many calories for a petite woman are necessary to avoid starvation? Okay. I'm, I, great question. I'm guessing what this question is getting at is, I don't, well, I'm assuming that this is somebody whose appetite is very suppressed. And correct me if I'm wrong, if you left this question and you wanna leave some follow-up details, great. But um, a lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes, especially in the beginning, month, two months, people find that their appetites are really suppressed. And this is another good reason why uh, follow-up is very important because every once in a while I will talk to somebody and we'll go through you know, what they ate recently or what they ate yesterday and they'll tell me, well, I had you know, half an apple and you know, a couple of bites of cheese and that's not a sustainable plan, that's not a healthy plan, I don't want them to be malnourished. So if that's a question that's going through your head of how many calories do I need to avoid kind of becoming malnourished, you definitely want to check in with your physician because you really need to make sure that somebody is monitoring you, that you're not gonna be malnourished, and you need to have a plan for what to do with appetite suppression because that does come up for people. And again, uh, we want, as physicians, we want people to be healthy and get to a healthy weight. We don't, we want them to do it safely and not um, hurt themselves in the process. So if that's you out there, definitely check in with your physician. You need to be monitored and those are the reasons why. Okay, next question. What does your experience suggest is the typical number of months for someone on GLP-1 medication to reduce 50 pounds in weight? Interesting, okay. Well, it depends, like if they have 50 pounds to lose, not everybody is, that's not everybody's gonna fall within that range of, you know, if we're thinking about semaglutide and terzepatide, 15 to 20% total body weight loss. For some people, 50 pounds will fall within that range. For some people, it won't. But let's just say that, yes, it, it does fall under the 15 to 20%. And again, um, there are many other factors to consider in the pace of weight loss. So things like other medical issues, medications that somebody's on, lifestyle factors, what they are doing, um, luck, genetics, you know, all those things play a role in the pace. But let's just say for the sake of argument that all those things are optimized. 50 pounds is within the range of what we would expect an average total body weight loss would be for somebody on one of these medications. You know, a lot of times patients do lose about one to two pounds a week. So, you know, that would be about six to 12 months. Um, you know, in the surmount study with surmount one, which was for terzepatide, um, you know, the patients lost on average about 20% of their total body weight. That was with a lead in period of 20 weeks and then an additional 52 weeks. Um, and also, I will say that doesn't even account for side effects. So, a lot of times, um, People are going to have side effects that might slow the pace down a little bit because they need to let their body adjust. So um, this is a great question. I would say, you know, ballpark, one could imagine six to 12 months if everything is, you know, uh, if there are no other external issues and there are no other internal issues like side effects. So but that's, 
that's just a, a ballpark and of, of course is not based on any particular individual, but it's definitely, it's not going to happen in a month. So, and you don't want it to happen in a month. Uh, that would be terrible. I think that's a good rough estimate um, for somebody who has uh, no other concerning issues or things that would be really interfering with their weight loss progress. And they're not one of those unlucky people who's just not really going to lose weight on this medication. So that's a great question. I know a lot of people are wondering like, how long, when, when is this going to happen? And they, you know, of course, like it's very annoying to think like, well, it depends, but it really does. But then again, if you want to think about it in sort of more broad general terms, I would say like six to 12 months um, would be reasonable. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions afterwards, you can leave them on this video or you can leave them on another video and I will find them and add them to the list. If you want to work with me directly, like I said, um, consult week, week of July 28th, grab a spot. Uh, I'll leave all that info down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe because it's the place for medically based answers to your weight questions. Thank you so much for watching and please be well.